Hey guys, Bill Kenny with W. Leon Artistry, and I got another little tutorial this pirate ship I just painted up for you guys. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Our channel is all about helping you learn and grow as an airbrush artist. We deal with a variety of techniques. Anyway, uh, if you're new, hit that subscribe button down below if this sounds like something you're interested in. Anyway, you're not going to keep you waiting. Let's get to this tutorial. All right, guys, start out here. I mixed myself up a neutral gray by using uh, blue and orange and added some white to it and came in here and started laying out my clouds. I added a little bit more blue to that, made that blue a little bit more on the blue side so it's a little bit blue gray. And then I came in here with some yellow and missed it in some sp spaces and then you saw me put a little bit of uh, umber in there. The colors that I'm going to use as we go along will be on that sheet on the left hand side. You'll be able to see the colors there. So I came in here with my umbers a little bit and then I used a very light yellow, based the back, and then I mixed up some orange, as you can see on the left hand side. And I started putting the orange, working from the outside in, and then notice that really, really dark color that I'm using there, although I'm going to use it sparingly in places. And then I'm going to use a uh, desaturated violet, which is adding uh, purple or violet to my yellow and place that in some places and that complete not complete at the top I'll be coming back adding a little bit of color to it later but not much um, then I came and I used some red and I'm just running it sparingly so that's why it looks pink and roughly put in some red in there and the reason I do that is so that the red shows up under the layer of black so it well not black technically it's a very very dark red red and black mixed in that so it's pretty desaturated um, so that those red tones will show up underneath I wanted to simulate that the sunlight and the clouds and the moonlight were creating some color on the water um, notice I'm using that dark color out there I create that horizon line out and I'm going to sparingly go in here I'm kind of making this up as I go um, to create those water effects and I'm just going to work side by side I'm having to kind of feel my way around a little bit because I'm going to be putting that ship in and once I put that ship in I'm not sure exactly where it's going to sit so I'm just kind of guessing in roughly where I'm going to put it but I knew it would be a lot easier to put the ship over the background than try to paint around the ship I didn't want the ship to be a very very dark black and then just paint over the top of it and this will give me a, a better look overall so I'm just going to go through here and find uh, dark spots of the waves um, using my texture stencil as you can see to create extra simulate those ripples in the water effect a little bit and I'm going to work that side by side until I get that in there the way I want um, you can see as you look how I'm just working in light layers and this can be done faster but yeah, I wanted to be able to just kind of keep my eye on where I was going with it. So a lot of this is just kind of done, you know, off the cuff a little bit. So I don't have any real, I don't have any drawing for the ocean or drawing for the sky or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm kind of making that stuff up as I go along. But the key is with waves, you know, they're always going to be smaller in the far horizon and then as they get to you the waves are bigger so the shadows you create will be bigger um, depending on how choppy and rough that water is on how big those shadings are so I'm going to continue working with my very very dark mix and as you can see how I'm working side by side but notice if you look at that you can see I'm kind of doing that in they're not directly side by side so it's not a perfectly horizontal line and so those lines are thrown in a almost in an X motion. So it's your like waves would be you are running up and down so that you're going in a miniature X or an elongated X kind of pattern back and forth with that. Um, once I got that black in there, I actually took some Windex on a paper towel and pulled out some some of that top layer of paint by using the Windex and a paper towel. And then I'm going to come back on top of that with a very reddish brown mix and you can see it in there 
and then I also before I got ready to put my sketch in I added a little bit more orange and a little bit more red to the background then uh, I went off camera and I actually penciled in my rough sketch for my ship I don't have a full sketch in there I don't even have all the rigging so I'm gonna come in here and I mixed again I mixed um, red with a couple drops of black to make a really really dark color and I want to go in here and start to define the shapes of the ship um, so as you can see in here it starts to the lines inside that are going to be a little bit darker than what my background ocean is so you can see the difference um, notice that you know you can tell the difference now that I start putting an even darker tone in there and some of that stuff's in the shadows so it is going to be very dark I will come back and I will lighten up some of that later in the picture um, on the side just to give it a little bit more definition uh, so I just came in with my mix working and I'm going to freehand now when I say this I'm going to freehand the entirety of this so if you don't feel comfortable with that you know don't feel that you have to um, but I'm using a pretty light mix so I'm not going to reach full intensity it's my mix is thinned out a pretty good bit so if you do mix your paints that thick and realize we're working on an aluminum composite panel remember you can spider out pretty fast if you're working on smooth surfaces if you're reducing your paint dramatically and so my paints are pretty reduced and you know if you start trying to flood fill it's going to make a mess so that's always important to keep in mind I don't have to be real careful as far as uh, it's gonna be so dark that I don't have to be you know really really beautiful perfect blends in here as a matter of fact it's actually gonna help me to create illusion of depth by making my blends you know kind of rough so I mean, I have to pay attention to them. Obviously, I have to pay attention to them a bit, but I don't need them to be perfect when I come across these sails. You notice that I'm darkening in one side is a little bit darker than the next, and it may not be immediately evident when you look at the picture, but the overall look um, will capture your eye. So you'll see how the sail on the, that is closest to you, I've uh, not darkening in as dark as the outer edge, and that just gives it an illusion that some sunlight is catching through there. Some, some of that sun and moonlight is catching through there. It's some filtered light. Light reflects off of the water, and light will reflect off of, um, you know, your environment to give secondary lighting. So you never would have, you know, that's why you don't do those silhouettes in, in just complete black. You, you know, you can do that, but it generally doesn't look right. When you do those silhouettes like this you know you want to have a little bit of color in those silhouettes because the reality is if you had a silhouette in life it would have some definition facing towards you you it would be pretty washed out pretty dark and you know you wouldn't see a lot but if you do it just in a solid black it definitely does not have the same look look about it so I'm just gonna keep working in here um, I said doing all this freehand notice how I will darken in the sails on this again I want to be darker on one side than on the other it's gonna catch and where you get all that all those masks and the rigging and all that stuff it all starts jumbling up in the background and what is behind the sails and stuff is gonna be even darker so it's not a single tone picture it is a multiple tone picture and that's that's probably the most important thing to keep in mind you know that your very dark values and we're never going to reach a 10 value or a complete black if you were to look at a grayscale and the value differences are only maybe two steps apart um, for most of it there'll be some that maybe are three steps apart so there's not a lot of contrast between your darkest value and your lightest value um, but you still have to have some contrast those they're just subtle the differences 
notice how I'm going to come in here on this on this shade and I'm going to get really really dark on the bottom of that sail if you now that we've closed in up on that you can see kind of what I'm doing um, you're also going to see me in here freehanding and notice one of the other reasons that I freehanded these is because your shadows off of that when you when you have something that's bat lit backlit it gets kind of fuzzy when it's facing you and I didn't want them really really crisp because that ship still a ways away from you and it's not going to be really really crisp first off and secondly when you're backlit like that and you're looking at something whatever's shadowed is always going to have just a little bit of fuzzy look to it so if you do those lines like with a paint pen or something like that it's not going to give you the same look you know will it work yes um do i think this is better yes i think it's better or you know i would have went ahead and got myself a couple pieces of paper but you can see i'm just kind of making up my rigging now i'm looking at a picture of a ship and I'm just kind of following what I think the rigging should be. Yes, I drew the ones in for the for the sail in the front, but like the little ladder netting and stuff like that, I just kind of made that up as I go along. And to get that right, all you need to do is pay attention to your perspective. Um, you know that obviously as they're going up the the netting it's going to work off of a triangle like that the netting first off is made that way and secondly your perspective is going to be skewed so that is the look that you should be having after i got that mostly filled in the way i wanted it i still got a little bit more work to do um i'm going in here and i'm erasing out some really um bright whites to simulate the white water that would created by the that would be created by the ship as it's moving through the water so you're getting those broken water where it's coming in there and we're going to tone over those a little bit but um, yeah for now i just carried that all the way back to complete white they're a little bit harsh but we'll we'll work on that and i came back in with my very very dark red and black mix it's still the same mix and continue working in those sails. Notice how much darker it is than before. Um, this has needed probably a little bit more red to warm that up, but that's okay because I'm gonna bring in a little bit of oranges in a little while. It's a little bit gray, too gray for me at this point, but it, you know, in the end, I'm gonna have that uh, straightened out. Plus, I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of white later, and I know that's gonna blue shift really, really badly. Um, and that's okay because I can use my orange to clean it up because of the colors that I'm working with here. Uh, notice that I put little lines in on the sails and that would be where the sails are sewn together. The old sails were sewn together like that. So notice those little streak lines that I got going in there. Those are, you know, those are kind of important to put in. Uh, that's something that you're going to pick up on really fast. If you look at the folded sail, which my hand's in front of right now, but if you look at that folded sail, notice how that's folded in there. And those are things that exist in real life, and those are things you're gonna wanna copy, even though that, you know we're not trying to make a perfect picture, but you still wanna simulate life. After I had the bulk of my masts and sails and all that put in, I came back in, I'm using a whisk broom, to create some more ripple looking effects but notice that I shaded in front of the ship so that make that's gonna make a huge difference in the look overall so I've got a darker shadow in front of the ship because all your light is coming from behind and there's going to be a shadow cast by the ship all your lights coming from behind and above mostly I should say um, so I'm gonna go through here and we're gonna kind of play a little bit back and forth with that because I'm going to take this uh, whisk broom and I'm notice how I'm tist how those pieces that I'm using. Notice how I'm not just going side to side. I'm t I'm turning that up and down so that those aren't directly side by side. After I do that, I'm going to go and I'm going to get me some reducer and a Q-tip. And you'll see me in a second, and I will start pulling out some little highlights on the water, which will create some white spots. Um, that's the highlights that's where the light is glittering off of it because you got that moonlight from above and then 
your sunlight from below and then you're going to get reflections off the clouds that are above you that are going to cast water down on the ocean as well so i'm using that with that uh let me pull out those highlights some of those will pull all the way back to white but some of those just touching them will only pull back to that red layer that i had put in earlier in my picture uh, which will give me a great variety of tones and textures i'm going to use that obviously you see me using that for the white water that I was talking about earlier that I had started to erase out and decided I didn't get it white enough where I wanted it. I'm actually going to come over there and tone them down. That's going to be too white. So I will tone those down, but you know, I needed to get them crisped up. It was easier for me to do that than it would be to lay a lot of color. After I did got those white, notice how I'm taking some white paint and yes, I know it's going to blue shift, but I'm using some white paint and I'm glazing over it. I'm also where I think the highlights are too sharp. I'm going to go over them and that will soften the edges of those up. Um, and when you soften them up like that, usually you don't have to worry too much about the blue shift. But the blue shift, since I've got so many orange and red tones in here, it's not a problem for me anyway. Using my little texture stencil, and those of you who haven't seen it, I make my own texture stencils. I have a video on that um, to create uh, you know, just more interest as I go along in the water. So I don't have a set exact plan. I just know that if we follow along in the pattern in which we should be, that it is all gonna work out all right. You'll see I added a bunch of little dots too with white paint for my highlights here and there. You'll see where I glazed over it there. And that's okay, and that, that blue shift will be worked out before the end of the painting. Still got my white in there, so I'm coming along adding a little bit to the sail. Um, just brightening up that side over there where the moonlight would be catching it. Um, did the same thing, notice I used that other sail there. Uh, also came in there and played around with my little moon a little bit and added some white spots in there and caught the edge of a couple of those clouds and added a little bit of foggy textures and looks and effects around the cloud there just just kind of knocking back some of those earlier textures and once again it's like I was saying any of that gray shift in those clouds is not going to matter but any of those gray shifts that I get are not going to hurt me now you'll notice how I'm going to add my white in there around that uh, chip and that's going to make it look like the edge of that ship there coming in between my little uh, gun hole openings and stuff like that just to give it a little bit more look from what you were able to see before because before it was really really dark um, adding this in there will just make it pop out where you can see just a little bit of those details also I'm gonna yeah just kind of freehanded me in a little Jolly Roger on my flag up there and that gray is going to be probably just perfect for what I want to do. Um, mixed up some a dark, dark blue. Added a little bit of touch here and there to the clouds on the left-hand side. I wanted that sky to be just a little bit darker over there. Worked around my moon just a little bit and added a couple of the touches here and there. With those clouds, it's just important that you don't go in there and try to create you know a whole lot of harsh lines. You don't need harsh lines in the clouds. So a lot of that is just working really, really loose a um, couple inches off the canvas. After I got that all done, I'm gonna come back in here and I'm mixing up, uh, I mixed myself up an orange, reduced orange, and I'm not sure I got that in there yet, but I'm gonna take that reduced orange, you'll see it in a second, and then I'll cover up some of those gray spots and maybe a little bit of yellow around that sail there to knock out that color and you can already see it on the gunwale um, where I use that orange to knock back that uh, blue shift. Gonna do it right there on the sails and over the whole picture just gonna get a nice little glaze. Alright guys that's gonna be it for today I appreciate y'all stopping by 
Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, you know the other butt thumb works just fine. But, uh, you know, if you really like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you guys share this video. Get the news out there. Gonna get back to doing tutorials. Sorry, it's been a little while since I got one out. Uh, we'll get back to having them regularly every week. Anyway, y'all have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.